Continuing with energy math, starting with number eight. The San Onofre nuclear power plant by San Diego was recently decommissioned and shut down. When it was operating, it produced about 2,000 megawatts. This is not per day, per hour, or whatever. This is instant energy, 2,000 megawatts instantly. A, if the power plant ran for 24 hours a day, how many megawatts did it produce each, each month of 30 days? All right, so... <clears throat> We're going to start off with 2,000 megawatts times 24 hours per day and times 30 days in a month. So when we plug all of that in our calculator, we end up with 1 million. 440,000 megawatt hours per month. So that's pretty easy math. So on the AP test, it's not always hard math. So our days cancel. And remember, megawatts and hours, they smush together. So you get megawatt hours. And so this is the answer to A. Again, you just had to sort of add it all or multiply it all together. All right, going on to B, an average home uses 1,000 kilowatt hours per month. How many homes did it provide electricity for in a month? So first, let's convert kilowatts to megawatts. So we know, actually, that there's um, 1,000 kilos in a mega, and so this is just equal to one megawatt. Sorry, megawatt hour. So you need to memorize that again, you could just, if you forgot it's a thousand kilowatts in a mega, a kilo is 10 to the third, a mega is 10 to the six. So six minus three is three. And so we need to move the decimal one, two, three. And since mega is a bigger unit, we need a smaller number. And so one is a smaller number than a thousand. And so this is just super easy. So a house produces, uh, or this house uses one megawatt hour per month. And it says up here that this produced 1,440,000 1,440,000 megawatt hours per month and one house uses one. So it's obviously going to supply um, this many homes. So I did that without the math. If you wanted to set it up with, um, without a calculation, sorry. If you wanted to set it up with a calculation, you could and cancel out um, megawatt hours per month and you would get the number of homes for multiple choice um, you don't need to do that for an FRQ they would want to see some sort of a setup and so this would be a good setup right here to show that all right going on to number nine ABTU is another measurement of energy use and includes natural gas and electricity combined Californians use 63 BTUs of energy per home, which is 30% less than the national average. How many BTUs does an average American household use? So we use 30% less than the average household. All right, so we want to find out the total amount used. So um, we use about, if we use 30% less, we use about 70% um, of the total of what everybody else uses. So what number is that? What is 70% of the total? So that's what we need to find. We need to find um, what 70% of some total amount of energy is equal to 63 BTUs. 
All right, so again, we use 30% less, which means we use 70% of the total. So now we can go ahead and solve for X, and we know that 70 is 0.7 of means time, so 0.7x is equal to 63 BTU. And so we'll just do this to get our x on one side. So 63 divided by 0.7 is equal to 90 BTU. And that's all you had to do. So you need to review some percentages if you don't remember how to do or to set up this problem. Once you've set up this problem, this problem is quite easy. Um, it's pre-algebra, but again, it's just figuring out what they want you to do. Going on to number 10, an average, American month, an average monthly household electric bill is 150 a month. Electricity costs 12 cents per average in the US. Um, in California, it's more, but um, that's the US, 12 cents per kilowatt hour. A, calculate the corresponding average monthly energy use for the household in kilowatt hours per month. Okay, so how many kilowatt hours did they use? This is a pretty easy problem. Just think about it for a minute. So the bill is $150 and one kilowatt hour costs 12 cents. So how much per kilowatt hour the um so we want to that's our kilowatt hour so how many kilowatts did we use so we want to cancel our dollars which is great we set it up to cancel our dollars so now all we have to do is divide um, 150 divided by 0.12 so 0.12 goes into 150 and when you punch that into your calculator you get 1,250 and the unit is kilowatt hours. All right, going on to B, if five people live in the household, calculate the per capita monthly residential electric energy use for members of your household. So we know that the whole house uses 1,250 kilowatt hours, and we just need to divide that by five people. Not a hard math problem, sometimes on the AP test, you get um, easy ones like this. I forgot to write my unit, people, and so our answer is gonna come out even, 250 kilowatt hours per person. So easy peasy. Going on to C, calculate the annual per capita residential electric use for members of the household in kilowatt hours per year per person. So it says per capita. So we're still going to take that 250. That's the number per person per capita and we want the annual so you have to know annual means year this up above was um, per month so we're going to do this as 12 months per year and this was actually per month so 12 months per year, and so our months cancel out and we end up per person per year. So 250 times 12 gives you 3,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. And so that's the answer to C. Going on to D on the next page. All right, so D, people use electricities in other places like stores, work, schools, the movies, and factories that make our good goods. In the U.S., residential electric energy consumption is about a third of overall energy consumption. Calculate the annual per capita 
total energy, electric energy consumption per person in kilowatt hours per year per person. So at home, we use about a third of what our actual use is. And so we're just going to take the amount at home and we're just going to multiply that by three. So this is kilowatt hours per year per person. And we're just going to multiply that by three and we get 9,000 kilowatt hours per year per person. Not a hard problem. Just sometimes just reading what it wants and understanding what a third means. So I multiply it by three. So even though I'm solving these fast, you can pause and think. They expect you to for math. Math, you're not expected to instantly, boom, know what to do. I don't either. When I see a math problem provided on a released AP test, it takes me a few minutes to wrap my head around it and go, oh, this is how I solve it. And I sketch it out first, try a couple things with a pencil, and then I solve it. But... Um, the same is for you. So uh, even though I'm going quickly, it's because I wrote the problems and I have the answer key here. So pause the video, think about it, solve it. Okay, so now here's a half-life one. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. After 17,190 years, only three grams remain. What's the mass of the original sample? So first of all, we want to figure out how many half-lives have happened so far. So um, going from 50, well, we already, we've, um, we are 17,000 years later and um, let's figure out uh, how many times it's had half life So we can take this and divide it by this because that's the half-life. So when we do this, we realize it's um, halved three times. It's gone through three half times. half lives. sorry. Okay, so we started off with, um, well, at this point, after three half-lives, we have three grams. So what was the original mass? So it's three grams now, but it had halved to three at some point from six, and at some point from 12, and at some point from 24. So we can just double these to figure out um, how it had halved. So the original sample was 24 grams. All right, one more problem with half-life. A 64 gram sample of germanium 66 is left undisturbed for 10 hours. At the end of that period, only four grams remain. What's the half-life of the material? All right, so 64, we're gonna half it all the way down to four grams. So we're gonna start with 64. It's going to go down to 32. We're going to half it again to 16, half it again to 8, to 4, and that's what the problem says. Four grams remain. So let's find out how many times it halved. It halved one, two, three, four times. Do not do this. One, two, three, four, five. That's incorrect. We're counting the times that it had, so you would count your arrows, not your digits or your numbers. Okay, so we have four half-lives. All right, and so we want to know what is the half-life. Well, it was 10 hours. It went from 64 to 4. So in 10 hours, it halved four times. So our half-life is 2.5 hours is the half-life for that. And that's all for energy math.